Now in Friday Night Lights, Desert League play heats up as the winner of tonight's heavyweight battle in El Centro gets the large upper hand towards the title. And Plus Calexico welcomes Imperial Valley League play to their house as the dogs and tigers of Imperial break out their claws at Warfield. And it's a game that was circled on the calendar in the offseason. Could the Raiders pull the upset of the unthinkable on a trip down the road to Shamrock Land? We're kicking it through the uprights for week seven. Friday Night Lights starts right now. It's a game that caused a frenzy in the city of Yuma this week. Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Scott Gross. And I'm Cole Johnson. It's also a game that had eyes on quarterback number four, Richard Stallworth, in pursuit of two state records, Yuma Catholic and Cibola, a game where bragging rights were on the line for a Cibola team in 6A, still trying to dethrone Yuma's biggest powerhouse in the Shamrocks of Yuma Catholic. They say, be careful what you wish for, yeah. right? So it all played out tonight in front of a packed house, and our own Luis Lopez was there for it all. Luis. Yeah, that's right, guys. The tension palpable on both sidelines leading up to this one. And hey, believe it or not, the first time ever these two teams have played each other. To Ricky Gwynn Stadium we go. Shamrocks taking on the Raiders. Incredible matchup for the Yuma area as, once again, these two programs meet for the first time. We begin in the first quarter. Third down for Yuma Catholic. Here's quarterback Richard Stallworth getting it over to wideout Daryl Coleman. That's good for about a 10-yard gain and a first down for the Shamrocks. Next play, Stallworth is going to find senior tight end Austin Johnson here. Look at this. And Shamrock's offense picking up some steam now as they go for back-to-back -back first down. A few plays later now. This is going to be second and goal for Yuma Catholic. Stallworth decides to roll out of the pocket and look for a man, and he will do just that. Find Sir Stokes in the back corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Shamrock's strike first. They would miss the extra point, though. Make it 6 nothing. I see. First drive for Cibola here, digging themselves in a deep hole. It's second and 20 from their own end zone. Quarterback Carter Rutledge takes a snap, desperately tries to find a receiver, but he will run out of time, and he is sacked in the end zone for his safety. Cibola just outmatched in this crosstown rivalry. YC would roll in this one as they take down the Raiders, 62 to nothing. To Gila Ridge and a shout out to Doug with the student section out in full force with John Sells 3 and 2 Brawley Well, Canson Town against Jessica Slaughter's 2 and 1 Gila Ridge Hawks. Opening drive of the game, no Ethan Gutierrez under center for the Wildcats. He's a little banged up. It's number 18, sophomore Matt Gutierrez, no relation. And he's going to toss to the right to Daniel Camillo. And Camillo around the corner with some stop and go, a gain of 19. Later on the drive, Matt Gutierrez flushed out of the pocket to his left, throws across his body and into the hands of Braden Faber. Refs say he had it long enough. Hawks ball on the pick. After a Hawks punt, the Wildcats toss to Tanner Carranza and he bulldozes his way for a 15-yard gain. Just get off of me. Second down on that play, first down after the run. Later, Gutierrez back to pass and he's sacked by junior Colby Caldwell. Brawley forced a punt. Late first quarter, Hawks Steven Navis back to pass, third and 10. And he's going to run for eight, and that's going to bring up a fourth down decision. Fourth and two, Hawks go for it, and they're stuffed. Maybe the turning point in this one, early second quarter on the turnover on downs at their own 34, all the way down to the five. It's Carranza, a five-yard bulldozing plow in. The game was 7-0 at the half. The final in this one, 34-14. The Brawley Wildcats have now won three in a row. And now we take a trip to El Centro at Cale Jones Field. The band rocking out as always. Rookie Pena's Central Spartans hosting last season CIF Division Three champions Modern Day Catholic. We pick this up in the second quarter. Central's down 14 0, but here's Damian Rodriguez on the run, finds Charlie Sullivan to get deep into Crusaders territory. Two plays later, it's Nico Viesca. He's going to get the handoff and he turns. Nothing into something. Trips over a guy, stays on his feet for a positive gain to keep the drive moving. But it would later stall as Rodriguez going up top here for Skyler Cook on fourth down, but just too much on it. So that's incomplete. A turnover on downs for the Spartans. And on the ensuing drive, modern day's Anthony McMillan, the big guy, 
sidesteps, gets outside, gets around another would-be tackler and gets to the sideline. Now Charlie Sullivan tries to knock the ball out from behind, but it's too late. McMillan is in for the 50-yard touchdown as the ref comes in late and signals touchdown. Modern day goes up 21-0 into halftime after the extra point was good. They hand Central another loss. The Crusaders win it 35 to nothing. Coming up, don't go anywhere. We have four more highlights to get to. And that includes one of the most anticipated games of the year in the Desert League with two teams looking to take a huge step towards a league title. Stay tuned. It's Furniture Row's four-day super sale. That's four days where the more you buy, the more you save. Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend. Plus five years, no interest and no down payment. But hurry, the four-day super sale at Furniture Row ends soon. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tack Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look. This civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade tack light, that's 22 times as bright. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. Only a tack light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures. But even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our tack light stop working. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. You can get a Bell & Howell Tack Light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99 plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. To order, call 1-800-369-0338. That's 1-800-369-0338 or go to trytacklight.com. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them Tack Glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, tack glasses block blinding glares so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. Tack glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our tack glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Act now to get your tack glasses for just $19.99 and we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay. Order yours today. To order, call 1-800-287-1705. Again, that's 1-800-287-1705 or order online at tritacglasses.com. It's the four-day super sale at Denver Mattress. Right now, save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Or save up to $200 on our Doctor's Choice lineup. Plus, five years no interest with no down payment and free shipping. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. Yes, their team name. Love it. <laughs> the Desert League title on the line in a midseason clash. Welcome back, everyone. The Vincent Memorial Scots turned some heads early in the year with a high-powered offense that led them to a 4-0 start. But after a loss last week, they looked to regroup against a tough Palo Verde squad. Yeah, and that's a squad that was crowned Desert League champions and CIF Division 5 champions just a year ago. Coming into El Centro tonight at 5-1, so let's get right to it. There's Coach Wally Grant and his Yellow Jackets looking to tack on another one to their win streak while the Scots aim to bounce back in their biggest game to this point. Palo Verde with the ball first and they go to what they know best, the run game. And Xavier Bejarano cutting back to the middle, shaking off a tackle deep into Scott's territory. Flags come in and that tacks on 15 yards with the horse collar tackle. Sets them up nicely two plays later. It's Bejarano again, almost losing the exchange, but using a juke to get to the corner. And look out, shaking in my boots. I almost get trucked here, but who's not shaking is Bejarano. He's in for the score to give the Jackets an early 7-0 lead after the extra point. On Vincent Memorial's first possession, after a drop in a blown-up play, it's Jacobo Elias on third down, rolling out. He's going to try to hit Armando Apodaca right in his breadbasket, but he can't hang on to it. 
That's a three and out for the Scots. They'd be forced to punt, and that leads to this. Look at the big fella. Jonathan Crow standing at 6'1", 235, barrels his way and taking out a helmet in the process to set Palo Verde up. And, you know, when you establish the run, it's time to go to the play action. That's Rio Albanez loading downfield the shot for Parker Loriero behind the defense for the 30-yard score. Yellow Jackets running away with it 14-0 midway through the first. The Scots would look to answer. Here's Elias with a pump fake. Pfizer over the middle to Diego Cisneros down to the Palo Verde 26-yard line. But a sack would wipe out the drive and force another punt. The Desert League now still runs through the city of Blythe as the Yellow Jackets pull off a commanding 56-28 win on the road. Let's now send it over to uh, Vanessa Gangora, who is down in Calexico today. And to Wardfield we go with the Hungry Imperial Tigers face the vicious undefeated Bulldogs. First quarter with about 7 minutes left, 0-0, Calexico second and 12. QB Sean Torres steps back, flag is thrown but throws a deep pass to Jesse Hernandez and it's broken up by Tigers Devin Meza. And the flag is on an illegal shift against Clex, but the penalty is declined by Imperial. The very next play, Bulldogs third and 12, Torres runs out of the pocket looking to throw. But Tigers linebacker Ethan Reeves is putting the pressure and Torres loses the ball. Clexico ends up punting. Now Tigers ball on the 31, still no score. It's first and five, Tigers QB. Chris Tiernan throws a dart to Devin Meza, who's playing on both sides of the field and carries it to get the first down just short of the 40. Now 2.45 left on the clock, still in the first. Scoreless, the Tigers first and 10, Imperials QB. Tiernan motions running back Rashad Robinson, and here he goes with a handoff breaking through the Bulldogs. Can't be taken down, and Imperial gets the first down on Calexico's 28. What happens next? Tiernan sees... Zach Ray wide open and throws a bullet. Pass is complete but gets taken down by the Bulldogs on their 27 with two minutes left. And the Imperial Tigers will go on to defeat the Calexico Bulldogs 24-0. Kind of a surprising win in Calexico. The Buckeye Field in Welton with the Pumas of Sequoia Pathway and the Antelope Rams greeting each other before kickoff. Early first quarter, Rams in midfield. Emilio Garcia picked off by the junior Levon Neal and he takes it the other way. He has a pick six to the house, and the Pumas strike first. Interesting play in the Pumas extra point. Watch this. The snap is going to be low, and freshman kicker Anthony Aragia, he's going to play quarterback, finds his teammate for the two-point conversion. Antelope looking to answer. Emilio Garcia finds Caleb Martinez over the middle. This is going to be a first down play. Nice grab coming right at you. Four plays later. It'll be a third down and five. Garcia will connect with, guess who? Martinez again. A nice tandem for another first down. A gain of 15. Antelope in the red zone at the Puma four. And the give is to Michael Hernandez. And he hits pay dirt. Touchdown ram. Two point, two point conversion would fail. 8-6 at this point. The final score ends up to be 64-6. Rams get thumped again and take another loss at home. Stick around because we're still not done. We go to the King's Palace where two teams search for their first win of the year. Plus, we still have our helmet props and out-of-town scoreboard to get to right after this. You're watching Friday Night Lights on KYMA. I don't think that, you know, you're a murderer. I just think you need to do the right thing. Somebody's got to know something as they were struck by a vehicle and that vehicle failed to stop and that's what the vehicle should have done because if it's an accident, it's an accident. The police don't just give up. Um, police arrived on scene so she wasn't robbed. Unsolved Crimes, October 5th at 6 and 10 p.m. Only on 13 on your side. Take an adventure with the Arizona Lottery. Explore wild and wonderful state parks all across Arizona. Whether you're here or there, the more you adventure, the more you could win. With $1 million in cash and travel prizes, start your Arizona adventure today at azadventure.com. The bladder control aisle. You won't shop here again. Your private business is your own. The constant struggle is over. Now there's a better way. It's HDIS. We home deliver bladder control products. We understand how you feel. For over 25 years, we've home delivered to many of the 20 million Americans who deal with incontinence. We offer all brands. We pay shipping and use plain, unmarked boxes. If we can help you or someone you care for, Call for your free product sample pack and $45 in money-saving coupons. Our counselors will help you choose the right product. And unlike stores, we're always in stock. 
you'll get what you need. Satisfaction guaranteed. HDIS, the better way. For your free sample pack with your free catalog, $45 in money-saving coupons, and free product samples, call 1-800-489-3026. That's 1-800-489-3026. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm -hmm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and walk. A battle of the winless. Welcome back to the final stages of week seven. We now feature two teams and just one will walk away tonight claiming their first win on the season. Yeah, and for the Kofa Kings looking to not only win their first of 2022, but their first in 38 tries dating back to 2017, taking on a wounded Southwest Eagles team. Eagles are coming off a big loss in last week's El Central City Championship at a game where coach John Haynes said he was proud of where they were at. So let's see if they could use that to notch their first win. To Herb Pallack Field we go as head coach John Haynes of Southwest and Pablo Cota of Copa. He's looking for their first stamp in the win column. Let's begin in the second quarter. Southwest up 14-0 Copa. In the red zone, Kings quarterback Alex Garcia finds Conrad Tuffy for a nice 10-yard gain. Make it a first down for Copa. Now second and goal here for Copa as they hand it off to junior running back Bryce Conan who punches this one in for the touchdown. Kings cut the lead. It's now 14-6. Kofa can't convert in the two-point try. Less than a minute left for the Eagles to answer on second and 11. Southwest quarterback Logan Youngers, he's back. He throws it to the sideline for junior Jonah Estrada, who somehow gets a foot down to complete the catch, an 18-yard pass to put Southwest on the Kofa 25. About 18 ticks left in the half. Second and 15 from the 30 after some penalties. Youngers with a quick dump off to the junior halfback, Mante Cervantes who uses a couple of moves to get past the Copa defense and in for the score. Incredible run from Cervantes as the Eagles take a 21-6 lead in the locker room. In the end, it would be Southwest with their first win of the year as they beat Copa 36-18. The Kings have now lost 39 in a row. Yeah, tough one there. But now we turn out to our out-of-town scoreboard. The Yuma Criminals uh, taking the tough 39-35 loss, a high-scoring game on the road at River Valley. They fall to 3-3 on the year. Sampa Squall taking a 55 nothing loss in that one. Let's take a look at our helmet props now. Mine is going to go to Yuma Catholic. You want the best in Yuma Cibola? You got the best yep. and Yuma Catholic 62 nothing. Also Richard Stallworth six touchdowns yep. and 360 yards through the year so he gets an honorary stamp. Yeah awesome stuff there. How about those unis too? Those uniforms yeah. are slick. <laughs> yeah, a couple right. of guys were telling us about those new uniforms this year but I'm going to go with the Brawley Wildcats. They've won Three in a row, and they did it with a backup quarterback. Ethan Gutierrez out. Um, Matt Gutierrez in for the for the Brawley Wildcats, and they still get the job done. Yeah, the sophomore making his first ever start. Yep. No relation. Yep. Ethan is awesome. Nice job. Luis, who do you got? Guys, I got to go with the Southwest Eagles tonight as they earned their first win of the year on the road against Kofa. This is just a big win for Johns Haynes' squad. So, big congrats to the Eagles tonight. Vanessa, who do you got? Well, gentlemen, I have to say my helmet prop is going to the Imperial Tigers for getting that win against the Clexico Bulldogs, who were undefeated. The Tigers had a strong defense, keeping the Bulldogs caged in. That leads us now to today's best. Here's the goal that we have. We want to uh, say thank you to everybody uh, that helps make this show go for us across the desert southwest. Yeah, big thank you to the viewers and also to the fantastic crew that helped put this show together. Bobby Brown, Mercedes Martinez, and Melissa Zaremba as well. And a tip of the cap to our general manager, Dave Miller, sales staff, and new director, Mr. Romero. And a huge shout out to our director that you currently see, Omar Velasquez and Jonathan Busco, for his help with highlights and graphics. 